Hey, this is Jimmy Beach with Alien Skin Software. This video is for all you texture and overlay fans out there. We're going to have a brief look at a few easy ways to build and customize our texture files for use in exposure. We are going to spend some time in Photoshop, but a basic knowledge of how it works is all you need. I'll take you through things step by step. The easiest way to get this going is by using existing textures, like ones that you've downloaded from the interwebs. I grabbed a few from Brook Shaden because we're like BFFs and stuff. And some from master printmaker Jonathan Penny. Jonathan has given me some pro tips on making textures over the years, so I have to give him props for all the help that he's been during the making of this video. Let's make them yourself. I have a few images open in Photoshop. I'll show you a couple of quick tricks to customize textures. There are a bunch of ways to do anything in Photoshop, so here is just one. I'll use a Levels Adjustment Layer. That's layer, new adjustment layer, levels. On the properties panel, I'm going to raise the black point and lower the white point. This tones the effect of the texture down just a bit because the lowered contrast in the overlay layer. Let's add a mask to keep the effects to a specific location. Let's say I only want it on the left side. I'll click on the mask the little white box in the layers panel, press G for the gradient tool, and using black to transparent, the checkerboard means it has low opacity. Now I'm using the radial gradient tool to be more specific, so when I click and drag, I set where I want the effect to disappear with each black spot on the mask. Any black on a mask hides the layer. There we go. You can see how the texture blends easier when I turn up the effects. The contrast change in the texture layer controls areas where the texture is crisp and then subdued. Now, let's use another layer in a different way. I'll run something through SnapArt and extract some painterly goodness. I'm going to make a new layer, fill it with my background color, white, control, and backspace. And again, using the gradient tool, G, I'll click around and make something quick. Perfect! Now I'll run SnapArt. I'll take a look through the Effects Tour folder. It's a sample of what each style will look like on your image. To me, crayon looks promising, so I'll choose that. I'll make some adjustments to the sliders to change the behavior of the effect. I want something a little more subtle than the preset amount. I'll press Apply when I'm happy with it. Once it's rendered, I'll turn the underlying layer off. Set the blend mode of the SnapArt layer to Multiply, and I'll play around with the opacity until it looks just right. You know, it's tough to appreciate all of the details when you're looking at a video, so let's magnify those before and after shots. Nerdy details, JPEGs, and TIFFs are all she wrote. TIFF supports an alpha channel, and for those of you that don't speak Klingon, alpha is the opacity of the mask layer. 3000 pics is plenty of info for an overlay unless you have a specific need for a larger version. It's discussed in the other video too. Shazam! Link to other video. That's it for making custom overlays. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching everyone. Jimmy out.